Hi and welcome. My name is Dr. Yoav Suprun. This webinar is about spine strategies, how to avoid neck and back pain during the pandemic. I am an orthopedic clinical specialist here in Miami Beach, Florida. I'm also a faculty with McKenzie Institute International, teaching therapists, chiropractors, and medical doctors the secrets of self-treatment and prevention strategies that we apply to our clients, to our patients, and would love to share with you guys uh, a couple of tips that will help you hopefully during this pandemic when more people are staying at home and experiencing mechanical neck or back pain. What are mechanical neck or back pain? For example, you have been sitting for too long watching a movie, possibly on your uh, sofa at home, and when you get up from that sofa or from a dining room chair, you are feeling the following stiffness in the lower back, possibly uh, limping or pain radiating down your leg. And as you walk around the house, often that pain starts to feel better. It goes away maybe for a few days and then it comes back. That's a mechanical back pain that can translate into what we call sciatica, which is nerve pain that you feel down into your leg, but it's actually stemming from your lower back. Mechanical neck pain is when you wake up one morning or possibly during the day when you're looking at your computer, and I'll give you a few tips on posture and alignment later on, and all of a sudden when you try to turn your neck, you're feeling stiffness. Where yesterday you were able to turn the neck without a problem, and all of a sudden you're feeling stuck and possibly with pain that radiates into your upper trapezius, the muscle up here, maybe down into your shoulder blade. You may be feeling difficulty raising your shoulder or even pain radiating down into your hands and fingers. You might feel some numbness or tingling. That's an example of mechanical neck pain. Now, as a spine specialist, this is what I often do. I teach my patients the secrets of self-alignment, what they need to know in order to treat themselves when they're not with me. And I gotta admit something, I started my career in 1995 as a personal trainer in New York City after serving four years in the Israeli Air Force. I'm an American citizen by birth, my father is American, so I came to New York City, started as a personal trainer, it took me only two weeks to memorize a book and pass a test. And I'm sure you know some of your friends or family members that got injured by personal trainers like I used to be, again, unintentionally. And in the process of training some of my clients, not only I didn't help them, some of my recommendations that I've given them to stretch those kinds of mechanical pains made some of my clients worse. So I applied for the doctorate program in physical therapy at NYU, got better in uh, understanding the anatomy and physiology of the body. And unfortunately, when I graduated, I still didn't know how to address someone that has mechanical neck or back pain. So when I, worked, I went to work for one of my professors and she recommended I'll take a course by a gentleman named Robin McKenzie. And Robin McKenzie was a brilliant New Zealand physical therapist. He passed away a few years back. And Robin discovered something in the 50s that was a very interesting uh, phenomena. And I'll share that story with you shortly. But the majority, what he realized is that the majority of people actually don't need to be manipulated or adjusted or being treated by someone else if they know the rules of how to adjust their own neck and back. So let's first start with a look at the spine. Here we have a model of the spine. Now you can see the spine, this is you from behind. This is your left buttock, your right buttock, your lower back. Here is your head at the top, the neck. You can see the spine has an S curvature. When you keep your spine with an S curvature, in general, you're going to be fine. You're not going to feel pain. This is when you feel good. This is when you feel limber. There's no aches and pains. The body feels great. However, at times, and often that happens during the day, we go from an S curvature to a C curvature. That C curvature can create uh, mechanical forces on the spine that can bother some of the structures in the lower back as well as in the neck. Now think for a second, when do you bend from an S into a C? Pretty much most of the day. Everything we do throughout the day involve, to some extent, bending forward because our eyes are in front of our skull. 
So we get up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we spit into the sink, we wash our faces, we shave, apply makeup, uh, sit at breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything we do is forward. We sit hours in front of a computer and now that you guys are more at home, we are seeing that people are increasing their mechanical load on their spine in that C curvature. For example, think of this as your sofa, your sofa at home. How many of you are sitting with your legs on your coffee table or with your legs like so watching television for a prolonged period of time and then possibly adding uh, some forces on your neck that involve looking down at a phone where the weight of the head is hanging like so or staring at a monitor at your laptop or at your desktop where your head and face are moving towards the monitor. So we do these C curvatures a lot throughout the day and mechanically it tends to pull the joints in the spine in certain direction. Now in 1956 a very interesting thing happened to Robin McKenzie. Mr. Smith, a patient, uh, came to his office in New Zealand, in Wellington, New Zealand, and he came to his office limping with severe leg pain. And Robin says to Mr. Smith, uh, what happened to you? And Mr. Smith says, listen, doctor, I always had pain across the lower back, never radiated down into my leg. However, three weeks ago, I bent over to lift something, and all of a sudden, I felt that my back went into spasm, and within a couple of days, it started to radiate down into my leg and I feel it going below my knee. Actually, I have a picture showing that. This is, this is Robin McKenzie. I'm here with him in New Zealand. And Robin sent Mr. Smith to go lie on the treatment table at the end of the hall. However, Robin didn't realize that the treatment table was actually elevated. So Mr. Smith laid on his stomach and as he was lying in this position, all of a sudden, Robin walks back into the room and Mr. Smith says, Doctor, my leg pain is gone, but now my back hurts. That's a phenomenon called centralization, and I welcome you to Google it. Unfortunately, a lot of people around the world are not familiar with it, but whenever you have leg pain that is now moving from the leg into the back, you are actually getting better. There's a lot of studies that show that when pain moves out of the leg into the back, you are actually starting to reduce some of the pressure on the nerves in your lower back. So Robin started to do research on the phenomenon of centralization and he realized that a lot of people if they bend forward multiple times a day and the average person Guess how many times the average person bends forward in one 24-hour period? The answer is between 3,500 to 4,500 times. That's everything we do in life because, again, our eyes are here. Everything we do in life is involving bending forward. And think about your parents and grandparents and friends of your parents who are actually aging, getting stuck in these positions where their spine is not aligned the way it used to be aligned. So we know a lot of older people who are walking stuck forward where they used to be standing upright because of one important factor that is missing in their life. And I encourage you to test this movement. Now let me preface by saying that everything I'm giving you is general recommendation. If you have neck or back pain, or you're not feeling well, you should definitely seek the advice of a medical doctor or a therapist certified in MDT, Mechanical Diagnosis and Therapy, what we call the McKenzie Method. You can Google the McKenzie Method. You can find a therapist next to your house uh, within 10 miles. We have therapists all over the country. So to oppose bending forward, what I would like for you to try is to stand up Place your hands in the small of your back like so. Keep your legs straight and try to bend backwards 10 times. The first five or six repetitions you may feel stiff. However, as you're bending further and further into it, you should feel loosening in that stiffness 
as you go further and further and further into end range. Now, again, the first couple of repetitions may feel stiff, and what's important for you to realize is that if you're feeling leg pain, and as you're doing this movement, the pain is starting to move up from your leg to your buttock, or from your buttock into your lower back, you actually need to do more repetitions of this extension in standing, and hopefully the pain will abolish after uh, 20, 30 repetitions. Now, what didn't I know as a trainer? I often recommended to my clients who were feeling this back or buttock pain, I would recommend for them to stretch their legs on a table or to stand in a hot shower and have the hot water hit their lower back, which feels good, temporarily does feel good, but it doesn't fix that mechanical problem in the spine. And what the theoretical model that Robin McKenzie realized when Mr. Smith was lying on the stomach and all of a sudden his sciatica moved out of his leg into the back, what, is, what he realized is there must be a structure that is involved in changing that pressure on the nerve. So let me show you two models of the spine. I'll start with this one. Here you can see a few vertebrae, these are the white, that's the vertebrae, the bones in your lower back. Between the vertebrae lies the intervertebral disc. Now the theoretical model behind Robin McKenzie's work was that if Mr. Smith laid in a certain position where he extended his spine and the pinched nerve that he had that caused him to feel pain down the leg all of a sudden went away, something must have moved back in or off the nerve. So here we can see a structure called the intervertebral disc, and you can see how the disc is putting pressure onto the nerve. Now, if I open this up, you can see that there are certain uh, positions that the disc can be in. For example, it could be in the middle, like so, not touching the nerves, not touching the spinal cord, being shaped in the middle. That's when you feel good, that's a good day, you feel loose. Or you may feel that the disc is moving to one side and a lot of the time Robin theorized if it goes to one side you will feel pain that is targeted to either your right or your left lower back possibly going into your right or your left buttock. In some other cases as in this case that jelly that's inside the disc can actually bulge. That's what's called a bulging disc. And I'm sure you've heard it. You may have friends or you got an MRI and someone scared you and said, oh, you have a bulging disc. You have to have surgery. And the answer, the truth is you do not. Most of the time people do not need surgery for these kind of problems, especially if their pain comes and goes. You got up in the morning and you feel great. And then in the afternoon you feel lousy. It's hurting in your back or it's radiating down into your leg and then it a couple of days goes away and then it comes back that means that you have a bulge that sometimes it's on the nerve and sometimes it's off the nerve i'll show it to you in a larger model so take a look here you have two vertebrae and a disc between them and so this is when the disc bulges onto the nerve and you can see how it comes out and now it comes back in buttock pain leg pain, what we call sciatica, and now as you get up and you move backwards, as you extend, you're actually realigning the pressure on this gelatinous material and it will help push it back in. So extension is standing is something you should try. And again, if you're not sure or you feel worse when you're doing it, you should seek the advice of a medical doctor or a trained uh, McKenzie clinician. Actually, a lot of people do behave like so when they get up from a chair and they actually hold their lower back as they walk. And a lot of the time you stand up and after a couple of minutes you take your hand off your back and you're walking, you feel wonderful, you feel loose. You actually adjusted yourself just slightly. What is often missing is going into that end range. So again, fingers pointed towards towards the midline of the spine, and you want to keep your legs straight, feet about shoulder width apart, 
and you are bending backwards, pressure on and pressure off, pressure on and pressure off. You can feel free to keep your head looking straight or you can add the weight of the head if you have no neck issues. Same thing goes if you want to lean against your kitchen counter, have the counter hit you at around buttock area and then bend backwards over your kitchen counter and do 10-15 repetitions throughout the day. Try to do this motion 10 repetitions about every 2-3 hours if you're suffering from lower back pain or sciatica and let's see what will be the effect on that. Uh, another thing related to sciatica is the following. There are certain pain patterns. Sometimes you feel the pain only on the buttock, sometimes it will radiate down into the leg or into the calf. And so the theoretical assumption behind it is that there are certain uh, nerves that are getting pinched as you are moving in this direction. Meaning, as you're bending forward, you can have, and here you can see different pain patterns, you can have the leg pain more on your outside of your thigh, or more in your buttock or in your hamstring going down into your calf. Now, when as a personal trainer, when I had when my clients will tell me this is what I'm feeling, I often thought that they're experiencing muscle spasms. So a lot of the times I would recommend for them to roll on a foam roller if they had pain on the on the side of their thigh. I would recommend for them to roll that pain away or I would give them stretches to stretch their piriformis muscle which is the muscle that's inside deep inside the hip the sciatic nerve can pass through it and sometimes I would say you know put your leg on a coffee table or a bench and stretch that pain away and it will feel good temporarily but it was often that people say Yes, while I did it, I felt okay, but the pain returned within a period of time and caused me to experience even more severe pain. And I, as, I, as I got more and more into the McKenzie method and became faculty and studied the spine and researched McKenzie's finding, I realized that a lot of her recommendations that a lot of personal trainers give the public, maybe possibly you, were to alleviate your symptoms, not to fix the problem. Now let me show you an MRI of the spine. Here we can see the vertebrae. And as you can see right here, there is something that's coming out of place and putting pressure onto the nerve. Take a look at all these images right here. And all of a sudden you can see that there is one of them that's coming out of place right here. This is what we call a bulging disc. Now, I do not recommend that you will go and get an MRI because the findings, whether you're in pain or not in pain, a lot of the findings in people that have zero pain, uh, you can find some bulging discs. So it's not always correlated with pain. And a lot of the time people get scared by it and you shouldn't. So the prevention strategy for back pain and sciatica is to do what we call extension in standing or possibly extension in lying. Now, Robin McKenzie wrote a best-selling book uh, in the US, around the world actually. It's called Treat Your Own Back. Treat Your Own Back, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it, just Google it, Treat Your Own Back by Robin McKenzie. And in the book, he recommends to do a couple of things in addition to uh, extension in standing, if you're experiencing severe back pain or severe sciatica, you should try to first lie, just lie on your stomach for a couple of minutes and just breathe. Often, initially, you'll feel some spasming in your leg or possibly in your, in your lower back. Then it will subside within two or three minutes where you're fully relaxed. Try to prop on your elbows. Lay in this position for a minute or two. If that's too painful, go back into this position. Alternate between these. And you can also try what's called extension in lying. Extension in standing is the one we did before. This is extension in lying. If your case is more severe, 
you should try to do the lying one first and not the standing one. Here again is the standing one that we talked about before. I definitely use the extension in standing before I lift anything heavy. If I know I'm going to be on a, on a, a flying to teach somewhere, I tend not to sit by the gate. I always stand because I know I'll be sitting uh, on the plane for a few hours. So try to stand, put your hands in your lower back at the airport and accentuate your lumbar spine. Push that lower back, push that S curvature <clears throat> to maintain, get out of the C, get more into the S. So your hands go here in the lower back. As you're bending backwards, you are preserving the natural S curvature, which will cause you to age also with a good upright posture. No one wants to age getting stuck in this, in this direction. And unfortunately, for many, many years, and you still hear it all around, people have been telling you, strengthen your core, strengthen your core, uh, to avoid back pain and unfortunately neck and back pain although many people have strengthened their core is still an issue and people are uh, experiencing these aches and pains although they were in the gym and hired trainers and did yoga and pilates because here's the truth you it's important to strengthen your core but if you don't know how to sit properly which is the culprit based on Robin's work for mechanical back pain. If you don't know how to maintain the S curvature when you're sitting, pain will return and will attack you. And it may go away for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, and then we'll come back again. So what's the correct way to sit? What's the proper mechanics when we're sitting? I'm going to use what's called the lumbar roll. Lumbar roll is actually when you check your car seat, there's a button, most of you have a button in your car seat, when you press on it, you will feel your lower back getting pushed forward. A lot of the time it's not enough, it's not sufficient, but when you are at home, I would encourage you to use a roll towel or purchase a lumbar roll, you can order that again on Amazon or any other site. This is an original McKenzie roll. Sit all the way in with the, with the lower, uh, lower back pressed against the roll. So the buttock goes in first and then you're leaning into it and that's how you should sit. Now I'm maintaining my S curvature without being in the C. The C, Mackenzie calls it the kiss of death. This is when, when you hang out in that C curvature, not only on a dining room chair, again, it could be also in your, uh, at your home on your sofa, where you're sitting like so for a prolonged period of time in a C curvature. And what I encourage you to do is always make sure you have a small cushion, not a large, not a large cushion, have a small cushion in your lower back to maintain, to maintain that hollow. Okay, so if I'm sitting on my sofa at home, you know, watching television, I'm taking this small cushion, I'm sitting all the way back in, and now I'm keeping my spine in a good, um, in a good S curvature, in a good uh, position, in a good posture that prevents the joints in my back from moving out of alignment. And again, that movement out of alignment is what we know based on uh, Mackenzie's work to move disc material from where it should be, as in the bottom here, it will start to bulge backwards a little bit until it touches the nerve and then you start to deal with issues such as buttock pain, hamstring pain, or even calf pain. That's what sciatica is all about. Here is the whole model of the spine. You can see it from the head down. You have the four different layers, four different stages of disc movement from here to here till you get a, a possible herniation and we want to avoid that and it's possible to avoid it. And here you have the two vertebrae and the disc model, which I showed you before. Two vertebrae, two vertebrae and the disc between them. So we bend forward, we flex our spine multiple times a day. And as a result of it, stuff starts to migrate backward. And that's the stiffness we're feeling when we get up. Now, some of you are stuck at home sitting for hours a day. 
and then you choose to go and ride a bike. I would encourage you not to use sitting on a bike as a form of cardio, go for a walk. I encourage my clients, my patients to walk four or five times a day, especially now during the pandemic, four or five times a day for about 15, 20 minutes to break the consistent sitting throughout the day, to break it throughout the day with shorter periods of walk. Don't go for a walk for an hour in the morning and then sit for the rest of the day. Break it apart, do breakfast, before lunch, and in the afternoon, before dinner, after dinner, 10, 15 minutes walk, as long as it's safe in your area to walk around. I'm, I'm assuming and I'm hoping that in your area now the parking, the parks are starting to open. So utilize, get out of the house, at least walk. Walking is one of the most important things that we need as human beings to maintain, to keep our spine healthy. Remember, the average person uh, needs to walk about 10,000 steps a day. And if you check your phone, most of you have a phone that has a pedometer in it. We're not getting close to even half of it. So I encourage you to at least walk. So to summarize, the difference between spine flexion and extension. So we bend forward, we flex on average 3,500 times a day. And we need to extend, as you're seeing here, we need to extend the spine to bend into the opposite motion that we do most of the day. And this is to balance the forces around the spine, very important. I consult a lot of companies and organizations and employees of companies who are spending a lot of hours. And if you think about it in your industry, the hotel industry, be anyone that works, whether it's receptionist or uh, housekeeping or management, anyone, we all do the same thing. We all tend to spend time here, leave things here, whether you're in the kitchen tasting things or preparing a salad or doing the laundry or making the bed, it's really important to oppose flexion with extension of the spine. Um, and again, remember, please remember that if a lot of the things we do during the day involve sitting, I would encourage you not to spin or not to sit on a bike for a prolonged period of time. Uh, these are the things we do throughout the day. We make the bed, we sit in the car, we garden, we clean. Uh, maybe someone told you to do crunches. Uh, and so everything here involves flexion, 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 and we got to maintain good upright posture. And to do that, we need to introduce extension into the spine. Now, I'm sure you were told by your mom or your dad or your grandparents or your teacher, when you were young, to sit upright, sit straight. You know, we were all told, sit straight. I want to give you a very important tip on how to sit straight. Because as kids, we were sitting straight for four or five minutes, and then we all went down to here. And then we tried again to sit upright, and then we slouched again. And the secret is, you can't demand from a muscle to hold you upright like so, in an isometric contraction without giving it a rest. So those of you who want to try it right now, scoot yourself to the front of the chair so nothing is touching your back. Slouch, this is your zero point. Now come to the extreme of the good, lift yourself upright, hold it for a couple of seconds and let go. This is rep number one. Now let's do 10 repetitions of this. Overcorrect your posture, 100% erect, and let go. 100% erect, and let go. Do repetitions of this, similar to doing bicep curl. We don't just curl the muscle and expect the muscle to, curl the dumbbell and expect the muscle to, to grow. We have to load it and unload it. Same thing with your posture. You want to load your spine in an upright posture, maintain it for a couple of seconds, and then let go, slouch. The key, and what I often encourage my patients not to do, is don't hang out in a slouch posture for a prolonged period of time. Because if you hang out here for too long, you're again hanging in that C curvature, and you're going to be pulling the joints in the spine from an S to a C, eventually the ligaments in your lower back will become over flexible 
uh, which will allow this gelatinous material to migrate backwards and eventually touch the nerve. So it's a cascade of event or events that I want you to prevent by understanding the correct mechanics of how to sit as well as how to stand. Now, let's say you have kids or grandkids and you want to hold their hands as they are starting to walk. Um, I would encourage you to get on your knees to do this like so and walk backwards with the kids as opposed to, and of course the knees will be bothersome a little bit, you can get some knee pads, as opposed to bending forward and walking with the kids. The more you can keep your spine upright throughout the day, the safer your, uh, your problem, uh, the safer your back will be and you will prevent uh, back problem. Now, <clears throat> so bad sitting posture. Mackenzie identified two lifestyle, uh, lifestyle um, factors that are predisposing for back pain. One is poor sitting postures. We just, we just discussed this. The second one is the frequency of flexion. So if the average person bends forward from the moment we get up until we go to bed at night, we are predominantly in flexed postures, uh, we got to oppose it. So if you're shaving over a vanity, if you're doing a lot of this or putting makeup, uh, get yourself a mirror that can get suctioned onto your existing mirror at home, like in a lot of the hotels do, and bring that mirror towards your face. And now try to do it here. I shave personally, I shave in the shower. I try not to hang like so for prolonged periods because I don't want to age stuck forward. If I age stuck forward, there's going to be a lot of issues that will bother me as I'm getting older. The secret to keeping the body healthy, and you've heard it throughout, you know, throughout uh, your visits to the doctor, or maybe you're seeing a chiropractor, is to keep the spine aligned. If you're maintaining good alignment, the outputs, the electricity that's leaving the spine and going down into your organs and into your muscles, these are the nerves the nerves that are exiting the spine. If you're not compressing those nerves and you're keeping them happy, all the yellow uh, structures here are the nerves. If the nerves are happy, you will age better. And it's important to keep the spine aligned as much as we can throughout the day. Now, let's travel up from the lower back into the neck. I personally uh, had eight months of left-sided neck pain that was radiating into my shoulder blade and down into my arm and I kept stretching to the right and I actually developed a tick where I constantly would pull my shoulder and try to alleviate this this annoying pain that I felt and when I took a McKenzie course in Syracuse New York I remember the instructor in one week and taught me something to align my own neck and that was an important motion I never knew about and I would like for you to try it right now. It's called retraction of the neck. So you're going to pull your head straight back and you're going to let go. Pull your head straight back and let go. Think of a very ugly person coming to kiss you. Oh, and let go. This is an effort. Don't go down, go back like a drawer. Pull your whole neck back. So again, retraction and let go. When you let go, the head will return by itself to its original position. Retraction, pulling the head back and let go. The first five, 10 repetitions may hurt. And again, the same story. If the pain is radiating down into your shoulder blade or down into your arm, even into your fingers, and it starts to go into your um, neck, you're actually getting better. That's the phenomena of centralization. I want to show you this picture of pain that's moving down into the arm. That's what I had. It's called neck radiculopathy or nerve pain. It is stemming from the neck, but it's actually, it's actually uh, propagated or, or it starts. It starts in the neck and you feel it down into, into the arm. Now, I was shocked. That's what actually got me to... Uh, got me to teach this method and I enjoy teaching every few weeks. Uh, we stand in front of a group of 50, 60 physical therapists, chiropractors, medical doctors, and we see patients on the stage and we talk about the simplicity of what McKenzie developed. And a lot of people think it cannot be that simple. Well, here's the truth. 
most of you, most of you have good and bad days. Most of you have days where your neck turns fine and days where you feel that your neck pain is either radiating down into your arm or possibly developing what's called uh, a, a, a mechanical headache. Headache can look like so. So here's where the red is. These are pains that are coming from the neck and we feel them, we feel them becoming either occipital headache, even sensitivity in the hair or, or, or in the, around the ears. Uh, I have patients with toothache that's coming from the neck. So what is often the cause for mechanical neck pain? If we, if we discuss that a lot of flexion in the lumbar spine, in the lower back, is the culprit and slouch sitting posture, is the culprit for back pain, what is causing uh, a lot of people to experience neck pain? So the following is things I want you to take into consideration. If you have a computer monitor that's not centered in front of you, or if you're taking the weight of your head and you're looking down towards your phone or towards uh, your iPad or reading a book, the weight of the head, the weight of the average human head is about 10 pounds. So here, I'll show you a model of, a model of the skull. So if you take those 10 pounds and you hang those 10 pounds for a prolonged period of time, you're looking down like so, the same thing occurs. You are starting to bother the structures that are in between the joints here in the neck and eventually you're gonna get a pinched nerve. It can occur down here or up here. And when we pinch those nerves, we start to feel, again, pain that is uh, mechanical. You'll be stuck, you'll feel it. You would wanna rub it or massage it or ask your spouse to dig in with the elbow but actually the problem stands for, stems from poor ergonomics, uh, just not knowing how to carry our neck or how to carry our spine during the day. So I don't care if you have a really expensive, good ergonomic chair, you need to know how to sit properly in it. So I would encourage you to take a look at the middle picture. This lady is sitting really well. She has a high-low desk, which is the number one piece of ergonomics uh, of furniture that is uh, being sold in the US today and around the world actually. A lot of people are alternating between sitting and standing. Uh, what I don't like about the picture with the, with the guy here, he's leaning back. And so when, when if you're sitting on a chair leaning back, the tendency is to protrude the head, which again will cause you to feel this, this neck pain. Now, what else do we do now during the pandemic at home? We watch television in bed. And so if you lean against your headboard, like this couple, you're actually really compressing the joints in your neck and causing them to derange. And look at this guy that is staring at his, uh, staring at his laptop. You know, when, when someone is staring like this for a prolonged period of time, this is a strong culprit to develop uh, headaches. The, the sustained protrusion of the neck uh, towards, the, towards the monitor of the laptop can actually increase uh, someone's symptoms. So how do you sit? What's the proper way? If you do have a laptop at home and you want to sit properly, I would encourage you first to elevate your laptop. Get first of all a, uh, a keyboard and get your laptop on a couple of books and open your laptops and elevate it to the point where you are facing the monitor. You're not using the keyboard, you're not using the keyboard of the, the keyboard of your laptop. You are using the monitor only. I have a separate keyboard and a separate mouse and I can use it by sitting like so. So my elbows are in 90 degrees. I am not, I'm not moving my arms forward, elbows in 90 degrees, sitting all the way back with the lumbar support. Let me take the lumbar roll with me. So I'm sitting all the way back in the chair. I have the lumbar support. And now I can uh, comfortably sit and type. I am not doing what I just showed you in the picture, which is a protrusion of the neck to uh, look at the monitor 
and stare at my emails. That's, that's a problem that will, again, move the joints of the neck uh, out of alignment. And I'm sure you've seen people as they age uh, develop the following posture, which is 100% preventable if you are aware of uh, good neck mechanics. Take a look at this picture here. So no one wants to age with a forward head posture. We want to make sure that our head stays above our spine and not in front of the spine. This is another exercise I love to give some of my clients is to stand against the wall, choose any wall in your house, and make sure that you are aligning yourself with the wall. Keep, make sure that you are here and let go, rest. You don't have to stay there. Go one, let go. Two, you can flip your palms like so, let go. Three, let go. And do repetitions of that throughout the day. By making sure that your head can touch the back of the wall, you're retracting your head, you're maintaining good posture, and then you let go. As you do more and more repetitions of this, your body will want to stay more in alignment and you will not get stuck. You will not age in a position where it's very hard to return to the original posture you had uh, when you were younger. So by, by starting it today, you're you are helping yourself uh, maintain that good erect posture and avoid problems that involve uh, mechanical, uh, mecha normal mechanical neck and back issues. Um, Lumbar support we talk about. Good, so to summarize, the majority of back and neck pain comes from poor postures. Do, before you do any bending and to prevent back pain, bend backwards. Hands in the small of the back, bend backwards 10, 15 times. Remember, the first five or 10 repetitions might be, you might feel some stiffness, get into the stiffness, don't shy away as long as you're feeling that the more you do it, the better you feel, keep doing it, don't fear it. Uh, back pain is often caused by poor sitting postures. Use a lumbar roll, get yourself all the way. After doing, after doing the slouch over correct, after you practice the slouch over correct, sit properly all the way at the end of the chair, get your buttock all the way in, and apply a lumbar roll in your lower back to maintain the hollow. Centralization is a very good phenomena to feel. So if you have neck pain that radiates down the arm and as you're doing your retraction, your arm feels better and the pain is moving to the neck. Or if you have sciatica, leg pain, and as you're bending backwards, the leg pain is becoming uh, less and less and the pain is moving towards your back, keep moving. That has a very good predictive value if you're feeling the phenomena of centralization. Remember to walk throughout the day, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, 15 minutes before dinner, 15 minutes or 20 minutes after dinner. Move your body around. We are not walking enough. And remember not to lose any valuable employee. Uh, train your employees. Help them understand what mechanical neck and back pain. I'll be happy uh, to assist however I can in uh, educating your staff and your executives in the, in the phenomena of uh, mechanical neck and back pain and prevention strategies. I would like to thank uh, Rich Viola for inviting me. Should you need to get a hold of me, this is my cell uh, and my email. It is yoav at sobispine.com. Yoav, Y-O-A-V is in Victor, at sobispine.com. And my cell is 917-373-5428. Would love to uh, assist you or help you if you have any questions, any mechanical issues you may have, or you need my assistance in finding a uh, local McKenzie therapist um, in your area. Thank you for joining me. Hope you had some, uh, uh, hope you, had, you got some good tips from this talk. Stay, stay safe and uh, enjoy the rest of, uh, rest of your day. Bye-bye.